All right, hello everyone. This is my spot for recording now for a few months, I guess, until I change it up. I don't know, working with it. But um, I bought these ears. I don't know if you can see it. I bought this for dance classes that I was teaching. And I'll return to that, but for now, I just thought these were cute little reindeer ears for uh, December and January. So December, January, I'll wear these. I'll look for the Valentine's Day one. So this will look really cute with like a dance outfit, trust. Okay, so I wanted to do this new moon in Sagittarius, solar eclipse, uh, astrology reading. I put, uh, for some reason, when I wrote this out two days ago, I put the fourth. And I was looking at the chart and I had the write up and I was going to post it, but I just posted it on the community page and uh, I just posted it and I was trying to record this, but the space just got busy. So here we are. Okay. So you can look on the community page for this write up that I, that I did. All right. If I have the time and energy to put it on the website, I will. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking of not even messing with it and just using the other platforms. But what I do love about the community page is that I can put blogs on there and other interesting things here that you all will find interesting. So the new moon solar eclipse was yesterday on the third on friday and we can still feel the energy today on the fourth and they say that this energy should last for the next six months and then i'm like okay what does that mean well the fight for for self really right so leading up into spring i always say that the winter the fall and the winter we all know psychology knows that you know our moods can get down because it's winter and as you notice, people are like, you know, what is it called? What do they call it? Basically stealing, looting, you know, like a whole group of them going in and taking stuff. And it's like from 2020 to even now 2021, people are feeling the effects of not having a job or trying to find a new skill and just different work, family stress, right? It's not an excuse. It just is. And... The year of the rat, the year of the ox right now, and going into the year of the tiger, there's a lot of different energies we can look at, different astrologies we can look at to explain what's going on, or just seeing what they say about the year. So it's not surprising to me all of the chaos that's happening, because everything builds on everything else. And I don't do like political astrology, but I do follow it, and I do see the patterns of it right it's more of self-empowerment and self-understanding astrology but in my own personal uh life i like to look at just world events because we it, it's part of our lives it's not something we can ignore it's so stupid when you know it, it makes no sense when people say that oh you can't really look at at the political astrology or you know whatever whatever someone might feel you have to know what's coming if someone uh don't want you to be fully prepared that person doesn't care about you and if you agree then you don't care about yourself so you really have to look at all astrology and you know look around and see what the different readings are but what i wanted to focus on was the energy aspect of it as you will always see in my write-up and then some of the aspects that are known to be negative but you can learn a lot from them so I'm just going to focus on some things, right? Because there's so much to focus on. So when it, when it comes to energy work and just clearing your own energy to deal with yourself and others, since the new moon is in Sagittarius, right? We, we can focus on some body parts. So before I jump ahead, let me rewind it back. The new moon solar eclipse in Sagittarius is Friday and I'm doing for a Pacific time, Okay. I didn't put it on here, but um, specific time. And that's happening at 11.42 p.m. So I was just like, I want to be asleep for this high peak. Like, you know, the day was really good. You know, I went out and I didn't realize it was a solar eclipse. So I went out, run some errands. And it was really, you know, it was good. And 
good. It was good overall, right? Um, 12 degrees, 21 minutes, right? So if you're doing a meditation, you can do it for 21 minutes. Perfect. If you practice Kundalini yoga meditation or 30 minute meditation at the high peak and you can even do it today. It's the best thing to focus on is whatever it is that you feel that you need. It's a Sagittarius new moon. A new moon is a new start, right? The solar eclipse is about the self. And as you can see the image, you have the image of the earth that I have on the background to this video, the image of the earth, the moon is in between the earth and the sun. So the spiritual understanding is that our self feels blocked by our emotions. And I noticed that yesterday, you know, um, in some personalities, you'll always meet someone that's kind of grumpy or kind of jealous or kind of envious or just not in a good mood. And then people that are having a difficult time or in a good mood. So our days consist of different emotions, different experiences, right? So I just focused on all the, the fun, cool people, you know, as well. So there's a mixture of both. <laughs> so we have to really be in control of our emotions. And some Sagittarius are really good at this. I always say that there's two types of Sagittarius, right? But overall, they're really good sometimes at controlling their emotions. When they're not, they you can really lose people, right? Whether you're, you're Sagittarius sun sign, rising, if they hold it all in and then they burst, that's not good because then you lose a lot of your blessings. So that's another message to hold on to. But the self might feel as if they're not being seen, love, understood, and the emotions are more upfront than the than the self the caring you might interpret someone not caring about how something individually affects you and the emotions is more important right what the person has to say their emotions so on so you might notice a lot of that in the day okay or in this even the the days leading up to the third and also on the fourth okay so hopefully everyone used the waning moon to get rid of things they didn't want emotionally, physically, and then the waxing moon days is, is time to like build ourselves up, right? So we are always building ourselves up or try to build ourselves up every day, but working with the moon to just do a little bit of each is really good. All right. So that's the beginning part. Now, if you're doing any kind of energy work, you can work on the, the, the parts of the body that's associated with Sagittarius, the liver, the sacrum, um, the tailbone, the thigh bone, the hip muscles, hip joints, lumbar muscle, lumbar vertebra, right? So you want to just be gentle with lifting stuff, moving, any kind of body things that you do. You don't want to overdo any kind of activities on this day. You want to be more sensitive to the body, right? So there's, I wrote up, I, what I did yesterday is I wrote up some things about the solar eclipse. Like I did some research. I looked at it again because I usually write things down in a notebook and I need to stop doing that. So I'm like writing it on the computer so I can even you know, I have the document there. Let me just leave it there. Okay. So the planetary energy on an eclipse day is simply just a higher level of energy, right? And the new moon solar eclipse energy in Sagittarius will reflect the experiences associated with that zodiac sign. So we'll see in, 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 in our um, life when it comes to law and and so on restrictions in travel we've seen that that's a very you know Sagittarius is about travel higher education publishing religion law and philosophy right now with um, the cocoa they call it right <laughs> um, they they're restricting travel so or trying to right I, I have to, I think I saw yesterday that something didn't go through or pass but they're trying to do that. So the more restrictions we get, the more that from my background of, of, of um, study in law, okay, 
they're always sneaking in something in in it right so you have to really be careful on what you support and really read the fine print and really know what you're agreeing to because a person will only present something to you because it it will sound good for you to say yes but then there's more more to it that you don't want right rather than being honest and say okay this is what's going to happen but these other things are tagging along with it that you don't want right so in some cases more restrictions or more laws is not good it's just simply not <laughs> right um and in certain cases what just needs to be done is someone to get up and actually do the job and do what needs to be done right so we're going to notice that on a bigger stage meaning you know in our political lives in our um our social our social life you know that we can control but really can't control but i believe that we can control that you understand so this is going to be a big shift in our energy and how we perceive things how we see things right but we're not going to even worry about the sagittarius energy is so strong where they're not going to or you can tap into that where you're not really worrying about what someone else thinks, how they feel, and it's not in a negative way. It's in what's best for me, right? So I want to focus on, before I get there, the important thing to realize about this solar eclipse is that it's a time to really look within yourself and do some soul searching and say, okay, what is most important to me right and because sagittarius is in the south node right now and gemini is in the north node gemini should be really focusing on on where they need to go in their life and sagittarius need to focus on what's in my past that i really need to change to make me a better person gemini where do i need to go to make me a better person and if this year has been kicking you in the b you know <laughs> wherever then this solar eclipse it was so interesting a kid said said you know i think after this new new moon solar eclipse i think things will shift for the better and we always have to have that optimistic feeling because sagittarius and the person is a sagittarius so <laughs> that was pretty interesting so we have to be optimistic about ourselves, our lives, where we're going, and how we can control and shift our own energy and the energy around us, right? Changing it for the better. So after this solar eclipse of, of, of self looking at self, right? And seeing how we can improve, then this will be a powerful new shift for us. Aspect, Mars, sextiles, Pluto, one degree, 20 six minutes okay so i was looking at this and i want to bring it back up on the charts here i'm gonna trust okay because i'm gonna trust because i started reading another one when i was writing it out but the the mars sextile pluto is harmonious however this aspect can be very stubborn as we know mars energy is very powerful mars can can be used as a tool so even if something is known as like a fighter or negative right but it is positive it's good mars is good but too much of one energy good or bad is not good right so if it's too sweet it's not good if it's too angry it's not good so this mars energy is powerful and you can use it as a tool along with pluto's energy of uncovering what is hidden so in your own personal life or in in say uh, the political life, right? When you're looking at things, the big picture of it, what am I not seeing, right? So when we express our emotion and how we feel, we can then calm down and say, okay, what is hidden? What I, I want to fight for this. I want to know this, but I like this one thing that I learned about Pluto. Someone said, Pluto is all the way in the back, right? Just sitting down watching all these kind of planetary actions. Kind of like if you're in a classroom and you're sitting in the back and you get to see the big picture of everything, right? And you're learning and you're like, you're seeing the board, you're seeing the screen and you know, you don't have to turn your head to the side or anything like that, but your, your memory 
of it, you're just getting the big picture, right? And you're taking in all the information, you're seeing what's happening. And you're seeing all the things that maybe, I don't know, the teacher won't see, right? Or you think they don't see it. <laughs> but some of them they do probably see it, right? So they just choose to ignore certain things, <laughs> which is probably sometimes for the best. But Pluto is looking at it and saying, okay, I see that Mars is correct in this, but Mars needs to calm down in this, right? Mars is powerful. How best can I use that? as a tool to really look at what I'm not truly seeing or understanding, even if it's hard and it has to do with me. And even if it's hard and it has to do with the other person, right? So whatever it is, we just got to take a hard look at it, put in the hard work, because I wrote this down yesterday and I just saw this video today on YouTube and it was like really motivational. It was just like put in the work. So it just went along. And I, I'm telling you, if I recorded this video earlier, I wouldn't have seen the video I'm, I'm referring to right now because the room was busy and it was fun. It's fun. Today's a fun day. So I was like, man, I really want to get the video done. Then I want to cook. I want to do some work for my, you know, for my job. I want to do all of this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Go with the flow. I'm, no one's pressuring me. I'm in control. I'm not on a schedule of someone else at the moment. So I can get it done. I can just rearrange my schedule. So sometimes instead of getting upset about it, we have a plan, but we're like, yeah, I can easily shift it. No problem. Right? So our hard work focus until we get it done is the energy of this aspect. And you're not distracted until you reach your mark. So if you have Mars sextile Pluto, whatever degree, this is a powerful one. You make great leaders, great commanders, right? Planning strategy of an army, right? So you can really use this if you want to say, I need to organize people. There's going to be other works you need to do to prove yourself where people want to listen to what you have to say. So then that's another issue, right? But it's still a great energy to tap into for inspiration, right? Great. This energy is also great for sexual energy because we're dealing with Mars here, okay? And it's excellent for organizing your plan and people, like I said before. Another point that I found of, on this is you can use this energy to change whatever you need. You can strengthen your personal um, control of yourself and influence others. Makes sense. Mars sextile Pluto. It could be used as a tool, as harmon a harmonious uh, aspect. It infuses and strengthens your athletic hard work, right? Especially if you have been w exercising or working, it, it gives you more energy. You can tap into this in your meditation or your mantra to in infuse and strengthen your, your mind because you've already maybe done a couple of workouts already, but you need to keep motivated for your exercise. It inspires you to do your fitness or a sport that you have if you're an athlete, okay? What if you, ha and I thought, well, what if I haven't worked out yet, and but I really want to, and I'm just like lazy or just uninspired or, or, or depressed or, you know, sad or anxious, nervous, then you can still tap into it, I feel, and use it to motivate you. But while you're doing that, get off your butt and start you know, moving, dancing, even just pretending, even if you have no weights and just like flexing, you know, but use what you have, you know, don't say, cause I do that too. I'm like, Oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. But I just get up and I do it and I use what I have and I do it. It also makes positive changes in any of your goals and plans. So if you have goals and plans and you're like, you wrote it down, you wrote down these goals and your, and your plans and you're like, Oh, I have these goals and plans, but I'm not motivated or I've been doing it and it's not working. Well, freaking edit it. Okay. kind of reminds me of, I want to say the night of pentacles where you have a plan, you're on your journey, but you can pause and think and change your plans and make changes where you need. Now, so right here I have Avoid arguing with others. Keep your energy high and positive. 
right? Now, the challenging aspect with this, in short, okay, with this aspect is, is that because of the energy of Mars, you really have to be careful of how, how you go about things. You just have to make sure that you avoid any kind of arguing and anything that would kind of lose track and lose your own personal high clear vision and and focus and then when you lose that self power it it also lessens what others are thinking of you right so but with that said everyone gets upset but when you if you could pull yourself from continuing to get upset there's more respect in that i feel because you recognize you're doing something wrong and you correct it and I, and I respect that so here are some other aspects we have mars squares jupiter right it offers extreme reactions right and also the ascendant squares the sun and the message for this is don't be misled by others now the same with the ascendant square the moon an experience of no stable ground when you change your feelings for another so if you if you change your feelings regarding someone else you're going to feel unstable like your stability you are agreeing and going along with something right and you weren't trusting your emotions because your your ascendant is where you need to go, right? And it's squaring. That means it's having an issue with your emotions, the moon, right? So now you're you're not feeling like you're on stable ground and you decide in the middle of it, I'm going to change my mind. Ch I change how I feel about this person and what they're saying, what they're doing, right? So the ascendant square Mercury is feeling restless and hard to focus. It can make you energized and curious at the same time. So where you need to go, right? Whenever you, your ascendant is where you need to go and that's where you need to be. But the Mercury is how you communicate, how you talk, how you get yourself there. That's having a conflict. So you're feeling restless and it's hard to focus but you feel energized because it's your ascendant and it's mercury because mercury wants to communicate mercury wants to get it right so you're energized and you're curious you're willing to learn and you're going to put in the work so with all of these squares going on it's always just good to pause and really think and what i do a, a survival technique is why should i care this much you know just let people be let things be and focus on you and that's a healing remedy, my opinion, right? So let's look at some positive vibrations. These are some positive um, alignments. With the MC in opposition to the sun, moon, and mercury, okay, because we have the ascendant doing this, now with the MC as well, it gives us the energy to know what we value. This is so important because when you value yourself, you can still get distracted and lost especially if you're not protecting your energy and you're not doing what you know you need to do out of fear, right? Then that's a lack of value in yourself. The, the sun is the self, the moon is the emotion, and Mercury is how you communicate to yourself and others. So sometimes you could be doing it right and then you just miss the mark, but, you're, but you, there's still blessings there for you. So with your MC is like the spotlight is on you. This is your career, your achievements, where you want to go. So look up more about the MC, but mainly it's your career and it's, and it's your life. And when that gets messed up, it really hurts and affect a person, right? So the MC is in opposition of the sun, moon, and mercury. This gives us the energy to know what we value. Now, a meditation on Friday, because that was yesterday, right? Friday, and I did some post, if you are following the page, so you would have tapped into it yesterday. So on Friday, on self-knowledge would be great to empower you from the waning moon phase into the new moon energy and the waxing days. Now, of course, Friday, we were still in 
waning moon and that's getting rid of what we don't want we don't need okay for anyone that's new to this right so if, if we're working on getting rid of the parts of ourselves that is blocking us we're overthinking we're worried about things outside of ourselves that we can't control we just want to clear that away right on friday and you can still do that today you do what you need to do regardless of the moon phase right so if, if you're hitting this today this video then clear out the negative and then in this new moon energy and the the waxing days still do the waxing days work bringing in positivity into your life positive affirmations but get up and do it while you're saying those mental affirmations to yourself or out loud depending on where you are right so this can give you more focus on what is most important for you to accomplish so what do you want to accomplish what do i want to accomplish what do i want to do this action is the sun the self energy work which i just said and the moon opposed in opposition to the mc gives unstable life professions right so if this is your in your birth chart right if the moon is in opposition of your mc which is your career your life path your life goals and all of that it gives you an unstable profession or career right so if this aspect is in your birth chart and you might be feeling some of that chaotic energy like okay i'm doubting myself in the work i'm worried about it feel it and then let it go right because that's energy playing up that we are probably thinking in our subconscious mind and and the high moon days will bring those to the forefront right so if this aspect is in your birth chart empower yourself daily with daily mantras for focus and planning your life so with with focus right so daily mantra for focus is very important but also plan your life so that that your earnings come to you from ownership okay and other group efforts so this is what came to me i'm like okay I've sit down with some Pisces who have to set up their life like this else they wouldn't have stability or home a place or anything like that so their partner is good at this they're good at this and they have to have a setup so that you know they, they can just only handle so much and you don't have to be a Pisces it could just be how you are made up right so you know you I feel like I have to say this like break it down in my mind you know I feel like I have to say it. so if you have a regular job you're working but you just have to manage your money you have to save and then you're going to school or you're learning a skill on your own you take a test whatever and then when you get to the other stages there's different stages in our life right so if you feel like hey I'm not at the stage I want to be then you work towards that you block out you cut out negative people F them like even if they're family friends you love them you care for them you just got to block them out you know you just gotta let them know hey I can only talk to you so much because if you're not aware of it when I talk to you my energy goes down you know and, and I'm sure you've had these conversations with these people but if you can just not even deal with them don't deal with them um, but you just have to keep that focus and when you do that you're better off for it right so eventually you'll get you'll get to that ownership of something or where you have another income coming in and that's hard right now because a lot of people are really feeling that shift but it's also not I hate saying this hard right now sometimes it's good for some some of us so that's great you know so we can find our way and work through it so also focus on your mercury MC opposition which offers intelligence talent and this intelligent and talent is in business it has good relationships skills for your work right so you can be very creative and successful at your work but be mindful to not get distracted or overdo your work okay so when you have this mercury opposition right the MC it comes with it's it's good and bad right you you want to put in that energy but you really have to stay focused so one more positive aspect of this is okay so one more positive aspect of this enhances or enhanced the solar eclipse for the new moon is the north node trines pluto so this is an arm harmonious aspect this is a really good one and it can be used as a tool to comfort and develop within 
you a new reprogramming of self, right? And the flow of focus that you have. So get focused on your life path again, right? If you feel like you've been kind of off your life path, this North Node is where you're going and it's trining Pluto and Pluto is like really trying to uncover it in this life. So, you know, for some, it might be like a little struggle to uncover, like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I feel like I need more information. And sometimes when we feel like we need more and more information, we get stagnant, we get stuck and we're not doing what we're supposed to do. So whatever information you have, keep going and then you'll learn and keep adding more, but don't keep yourself still, you know, that's not good because you'll never get anywhere. So you want to get focused on your life path again, if you feel like you've slide off or just put more focused into it, if you're still on it, do your shadow work, which will help you, okay, to defeat these patterns that keep you feeling stuck, blocked, or unmotivated. You can overcome your challenges in life and start walking your path now. There's no perfect time. And as I was writing this, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, a daily practice of getting what you want and need in the waxing moon days is important. So when you get up, whatever routine you have, throw in some positive affirmations, uh, a short mantra that you can say that will kind of like just reprogram your mind that you're like, oh yeah, I'm focused on this, 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 and this. And you're still having fun throughout your day, but you're, you're making sure you get done what you want. So you want to remain strong, happy, positive, and you want to shape your mind daily to do the best that you can, right? And whatever it el whatever you didn't get done in the day, you leave it for tomorrow. But just remember that there's no special day in the future where everything's going to be perfect, right? You just have to get up and go and just do it. You know, you got to there's no day that you're going to be like, "Oh, I am this" or or that everything is perfect and, you know, there's just none, right? So, I hope that this write up that I did and that I post and making a video for it, uh, kind of help you see what this, what I'm focusing on, on this, um, new moon. And if it relates to you, great. But just remember that this Santar energy is about travel. Now, even if you're not physically wanting to travel right now, or what I just noticed, you know, for someone else, their travel plan, plan got canceled. You know, they were supposed to be gone today, but they're plans got canceled, right? So that was pretty interesting, <laughs> you know, in days leading up to it, I was like, hmm, you know, um, I, I was like, okay, cool. But other factors had happened. And I'm like, I don't know if, if, if this will work out, then you can go. But even in their own personal situation, something was blocking it. But then on a global scale, they were doing all these lockdowns and the country that they were supposed to go to had some restrictions too. So yeah, you know, Sagittarius is definitely about travel and it does show up in the new moon, which it did. Uh, the full moon is going to be, well, let me go through this calendar and look at this. Uh, and this, I'm using spe um, Pacific time, right? So Friday, December 10th is the first quarter moon in Pisces. Saturday, December 11th, will also have the energy of the first quarter moon in Pisces and it switches over to Aries by 146 specific standard time. And then Saturday, December 18th is the full moon in Gemini. Sidebar, the day before that is the Spider-Man movie. I'm going to go see that. Okay. Then December 27th, Monday is the last quarter moon in Libra. All right. And it's really interesting. I was jumping ahead I was going to mention another video, but I was jumping ahead to next year and I noticed that January has like three moons. January has a new moon, then it has a full moon, and then it has another new moon. And March is the same thing because February just has a full moon on February 16th. But then March, but you know, because of the way they set up this calendar. They have a new moon on March 2nd. They have a full moon on March 18th. And they have a new moon on March 31st. And the reason why I look at it, because I'm like, man, it is cold. I mean, 
where I am right now, but like, <laughs> it's like, I'm looking forward to the end of March. Like I'm, I'm enjoying all of the dates, but I'm really looking forward, you know, to, to, um, and, and being where I am, it never really gets that cold. And I'm noticing that, you know, the sun is out and it might be cold at different times, you know, early in the morning and late, you know, temperature drops, whatever is cold to me, you know, it's cold or chilly, but I'm really looking forward to spring and summer. So I'm really looking for the new year and a new start. I had to take a little break. This year was a lot of death and uh, sadness and, um, you know, next year can just only be better. That's, that's just it. You just get tougher and you just clear your chart, you clear your way and things just get better. That's the bottom line. So to recap the words that I have on here, positive changes, just know that after the solar eclipse, there's no more solar eclipse for a, a, a long while. So it's really clearing the path. It's really clearing the way, right? I just love these. And I love that they're like, they're firm. It's not like, <laughs> you know, it was cheap, you know, like at the dollar store, but like it, it's good. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and I'll save it for next year too. Um, so it's like a positive change. So welcome that positive change. This video is longer than I thought. Moving forward. Centaurs are always on a journey. They're moving forward. I knew, I know so many people that were born in the first couple days of December. So it's just been a celebration. So even if it's not my birthday, I just feel happy. You know, it's good. People that I, I love or I care for. Now, moving forward, just keep yourself moving forward. Whatever is happening, just keep yourself moving forward. Deal with it and move forward. It's like a positive, optimistic attitude. And that's great. The waxing moon days, use those waxing moon days. We're in these waxing moon days right now. Let me pull up the chart. We're in these waxing moon days right now. So use them to your benefit, to do your positive energy work, right? So we're having this from the 4th of December to the 17th of December, right? So kind of like two weeks, right? And then the 18th of December is the full moon in Gemini. So Sag Sagittarius and Gemini are opposites on the chart. Now, even though it's your opposite sign, and this just came to me, so, and I, I was, uh, I saw another video talking about it, and I was like, what? But sometimes Geminis can't get along with some Sagittarius and vice versa, because that energy just might be too abrasive and maybe they don't like each other telling them the truth in a harsh way, right? They're not going to play with each other. So if you find that there's a clash, that person could have other things in their chart that is just not in alignment with you, even if on paper you're both supposed to be good, right? But I have to do a Gemini video. I have to get into it deep. I have to do a Gemini video and I have to do a Sagittarius video. I don't want to go too deep. But what I want to say is that use the most positive energy. Light that fire within yourself because Santaurus, Sagittarius is about fire and it's a new path. So really light yourself up with that positive energy, even on the fourth. Okay. Because in the fourth, we're still going to be feeling this energy for the next six months. Okay. And what does the next six months look like? Okay, so we have December, January, February, March, April, May. So it's basically May. Okay, let me look at the May chart. May is coming in. So in May, we're going to have on May, no way. That's that, that's this year. So let me look at May because I was like, what? No, that's like, that happened on my, no, I was like, that's. Man, I would have been like, what is she talking about? Okay. <laughs> so if you are a Sagittarius, okay, and you're watching this video, six months from now, right? The energy is holding six months from now. It's going to still, the, the effects of it, make it big positive changes. May 15th is going to be a full moon lunar eclipse, Okay. And that's going to be in Scorpio. So if you are a Sagittarius with some kind of Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon, or another powerful placement in your chart where Scorpio has a lot of planets in it, it's just going to be a powerful six months for you to make some positive changes for your life, right? If you are a Gemini watching this, May 30th, 
new moon in Gemini, especially if last year May was rough for you, this one, it should be a lot smoother, smoothing out. And you got to put the work in there. Right? I did say May 15th, Sunday, May 15th, full moon, lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Monday, May 30th, new moon in Gemini. Okay? I want to look at June. I want to jump ahead. Okay? Now, in June... That was the new, this is the new moon, right? So whatever intention you're setting, but, and I have to mention something else, whatever intention you're setting on the new moon and the, and the, the solar eclipse energy and, and any kind of eclipse energy, if you're not a strong, have a strong constitution, a strong spiritual energy, it can really mess you up to do any kind of um, powerful ritual on these days because if you're tapping into some serious stuff, but if you're just setting a simple intention or, or focus or meditation, that's good. And you're inside doing it, right? So Tuesday, June 14th is a full moon in Sagittarius. So it's a six months thing. And, and, and a lot of them won't say it, but, and they didn't say it, but I'm saying it from the new moon to the full moon of that same Zodiac sign. Okay. That's a six months, okay? December to June, okay? Now, within that span, because it's May, but then in June, this full moon, whatever goal you're setting, look at that June 14th. You should make some improvement financially, love, self-love, relationship, you know, just self. It really is self because it's a solar eclipse. It's nothing else other than self checking myself there solar sun it's a self improvement it's self 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 and you have to be optimistic for yourself you have to think what does sagittarius represent and what is reflecting in my life that this zodiac sign governs right and then you have to make those personal changes for yourself because the full moon's going to manifest it okay and i just realized that too i'm not going to say it but i realized how important june is right so this soul, this solar, this eclipse energy is very powerful. If you think about the eight of cups, it has an eclipse in there. Okay. And I want to say it's a solar eclipse. I have to look in the book, but comment in here if it's a solar. I don't think it's a lunar. I think it's a solar eclipse. So it's like things could seem perfect or you want it to seem like an eight and it's balanced, but the cups are not in alignment. They are not in balance. And, and, but there's, there's time to be alone and to walk and to think and to make it into balance. But remember, cups are water, they're emotion. So whatever you're trying to do to figure yourself out, if you've made a, a leaping mess of that for yourself or others, it might not clean up. But if you can clean up for yourself, then that then you've won. But you might lose big, kind of like the five of cups, lose more than you have. But if you fix your ish, then good for you. <laughs> okay? And... What I just noticed from dealing with someone is that they have a strong Sagittarius in their chart and they have effed up, right? But that's their journey, right? But I just realized that that's an issue, right? So this is like the karmic soul searching kind of thing, right? So, you know, whatever is in your chart, wherever Sagittarius is in your chart, also look at that and see what house it's in, what planets are there, and just see how that reflects to your personal life. Now, looking at the chart for Sagittarius right now, and that's what I'm clicking on. Let me go there. Okay. I'm clicking over to there. I don't like dead air, but it is what it is. It's the third. I'm going to say, no, 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 Sagittarius. It's a lot of the third house and the fourth house that's going on right now. The third house is Gemini. So I know that the third house in astrology, I know what that is Gemini's house. Okay. Certain ones you just remember right off the bat. So it's a lot of third house issues, right? So it's the mind, it's thinking, it's communicating, it's, it's self, it's siblings, it's, it's, it's just your neighborhood where you are. It's, 
it's education, especially early education, okay? So your kids, their education, right? And we've, we've noticed that early education is, is sure it's elementary school, but it could also apply to high school, okay? And then after that, it's, it's you know, higher education, which is Sagittarius. But Sagittarius, the third house and the ninth house are opposite from each other. So it's a lot of strong issues right now is elementary, you know, the mind, the beginning, the communicating, which is very important, the third house. And it also goes over into higher learning and philosophy and law and religion, right? So a lot of these, we can see that politically, we can see that in our personal life. The ninth house also do with learning and ethics, okay? And also our, all of our relationships, right? And just being wise, wisdom, and that optimistic mind and that willing to communicate and to, to really find out what it is that we need to know. So, but also, we're also dealing with a lot of fourth house issues, and they tie really well with each other, which is the home, your roots, and your family, where you come from, your family, your self-care, your emotions, okay? It deals a lot with women, or the, and the feminine energy, and children, the mother and child relationship energy, and the foundation of that. So we can see that on the big stage, like I said, okay? the world at large, and we can see that in our own personal lives too. So that's what's happening right now that we're seeing, but we're also trying to deal with all of that and deal with ourselves, and we have to make that improvement. If we don't make that improvement, someone else is going to make it for us, which is is might we might not like, right? So I think I've said enough. Um, so that's the reading that I have to share. So just don't let your emotion kind of block you know, don't let other people, way of other people treating you make you feel any less and that yourself is not valued because you have to value yourself. And I think the deer in some native tradition, I just thought of that, the deer is like a spirit animal. So I have to do videos on spirit animals because I was thinking about the deer a lot and we were talking about the deer from memory, from a special memory. So maybe I'll do something on the deer spirit and, and uh, some other um animals we'll see so just leave a comment if this video was good uh leave some excellent you know just whatever your thoughts are something positive and good and um i hope the new moon was great for you you can feel the energy today on the fourth and it's a six months type of energy hold that you know all the other new moons are going to come up where you're going to send intentions and that's fine write it down you know i'm going to go write down what i what i did in my calendar so i can look back in my calendar book and see what was my intention and, and then keep keep myself to the fire of it okay and another thing i wanted to say in this video is know what you know what your birth sign element is but also know what your second element is because you can work with both of them okay and if you have two second elements that are the same number in your chart say like your let me explain this and I should make a separate video of this, but whatever. Okay. Let me look at this chart. Say that your strongest element, right? And the strongest element for, for this new moon is fire, right? And the second strongest is earth and water and the fourth is air. But say that your strongest element is a fire and it's at like an eight or a 12. And then like today, the, the earth and the water is at seven, right? It's like the same number. You got to figure out which one do you feel drawn to the most. And then you can also switch back and forth in what element you use a lot in your practice, right? So that's all. That's all I want to share. Got to keep it pushing. Got to go. But um, happy December. And I hope that in six months, whatever positive affirmation you set for yourself to limit the conflicts you're feeling and to balance out your emotion and your thoughts and your plans for the future. I hope that it goes well for you and just bless yourself, bless your situation, send out that positive vibe. And, you know, even if you're upset, even if you, you know, whatever the situation is, just like hold your strength and your peace and just move forward. All right. Peace.